snowflakes. Over thousands of years, they compressed to form glaciers, but then break off to form icebergs. An average one weighs 200,000 tonnes. And that, give or take, is around 100 trillion snowflakes that form the structures that the expedition is trying to model, using a combination of sonar robots and Doug's first-hand observations. You have basically have a good look at one side of the bed between the surface and 30 metres. Tell them what I saw, and it will mean that they can interpret the sonar data that comes back. They'll get a better idea of it if I've seen it for myself. It's quite eerie going down the side of the iceberg. You're going down into the darkness, into the blue, into the green. And very occasionally there'll be this really loud thump, just like someone had hit you with the flat of their hand in the center of your chest, where the iceberg is, is banging on the bottom. You really don't want to go too far down because there is a real danger of being squished by the iceberg underneath. Well, you always worry when divers are in the water, but iceberg diving, there, there's even more of that uh, anticipation and excitement that goes on in the, in the lower part of your belly. So you swim in and you begin to see the details. You begin to realize that this is not a, a flat wall of ice going into the depths. This has tiny little dimples on it, which it almost looks like a giant golf ball. These features are added to the models to understand how they affect the way the icebergs float and travel over long distances and into the shipping lanes. It's good to contribute to science at a basic level like this, when the science is still developing, to come in, take some shots, which help the scientists, that's really useful. For all their unpredictability, there is regularity in the behavior of icebergs. If you look carefully, and ask the right questions. 